This is the first anti-aircraft vehicle in Soviet tech tree that can be played with a dirty computer screen. Because ZSU-23-4 Shilka has radar, which not only makes detection of air targets easy, but also provides lead indicator that shows where to shoot. Destroying opponents while standing on respawn has never been easier. Unlike many vehicles with hard to understand letters and digits in their names, this one is very straightforward and not so secret at all. It's equipped with four 23mm cannons. It's one of the smallest calibers out of all SPAAs of battle rating 8 or above, and that has consequences, both good and bad. The smaller the caliber, the bigger rate of fire. Each barrel shoots 850 rounds per minute. That, in combination with radar's tracking, made it very easy to hit opponents, even for me. But when I say hit, I mean literally, as that is the most common message you will get. That's the another side of small caliber cannons. Projectiles don't do much damage. You will need multiple hits to destroy an aircraft. It's easy to do when opponents are not aware of you or they are moving very slow, like helicopters, or even better when they are AFK. Though it's very noticeable for anyone when cloud of bullets is coming their way, and since low caliber also means less mass, which in turn affects how quickly these bullets lose speed over distance, that time delay gives opponents few seconds to react which is more than enough to change course of the plane. Lead indicator will be so far from the target that when scoped you often won't be able to see them both. It will be more comfortable to use sights just to lock on target and then use usual third person camera to shoot. If you start shooting once lead indicator becomes available, which can appear even more than 3 kilometers away, it will give opponents about 5 seconds to do something about your shots. And once they start dodging, your fire becomes extremely ineffective. Keeping that in mind, it's worth waiting until opponents get closer. The best opportunity for opening strike is when they are about to attack someone. For few seconds they must fly straight and usually they are so focused on their target that might not even notice traces of your projectiles. Because of high rate of fire, Shilka can use all of its 2000 pieces of ammunition in slightly more than 30 seconds, which is more than enough to destroy all slow or unaware opponents, but if you attack dodging jets, that can quickly leave you with couple of hit messages and no ammo. Following lead indicator gets more difficult when opponents fly close to the ground. If you lose line of sight, your target lock will be lost and you will have to find it in your sights to lock on again. Which consumes time. Sometimes it will be faster to shoot them without indicator's help, especially if they are relatively close. Additionally, the more objects around your target, the bigger the chance of interference. That can result in your lead indicator showing obviously incorrect information and eventually can even lose the target despite maintaining direct line of sight. But the worst case scenario is when there are no air targets. Because Shilka struggles when it comes to dealing with ground vehicles. It has the smallest penetration of all high rank SPAAs. Its shells can cause a lot of chaos, break tracks or even guns, but with armor-piercing projectiles that can penetrate only 46mm, even light tanks can be tough targets. Even if bullets went through, your post-penetration damage can be completely absorbed by modules like engine. Additionally, such small projectiles will almost never trigger hull break for soft vehicles. And that is when opponents are close to you, because it gets even more difficult when they are further away where your penetration drops significantly. At 1 km range, it will drop to 23mm of penetration. So the only targets Shilka can handle are extremely lightly armored, and even then it matters if their armor plates are angled. 
In total there are three quite similar bell types, but you can take only one of them into battle. I would use a munition belt that mostly contains high explosive shells, that will make your fire more effective against air targets and while it makes Shilka even worse when you fight tanks, you can easily compensate that by shooting more rounds since ground vehicles at least cannot start dodging your projectiles once they see the tracers. And if you are fighting tanks, probably you moved away from respawn so you are more likely to resupply on capture point. The Shilka itself is not protected at all. Its armor doesn't reach 10 mm, so basically any machine gun can penetrate it, though usually it will be simply hull broken or its ammunition will detonate, which as usual for SPAs takes so much space that it becomes hard to hit this vehicle without damaging ammo rack. Hiding such tall vehicle from opponent's fire is also difficult, because of only 4 degrees of gun's depression Engaging any ground vehicle is impossible without exposing huge silhouette of Shilka, so vehicle survivability is very low. Additionally, even if you stay on respawn, once you engage air targets, your tracers will reveal your approximate location to all opponents. Maximum speed is 50, but on average your speed will cap at 36 kph. That makes Shilka a little slower than average among high battle rating tanks. Though considering that it sometimes can struggle to penetrate even light tanks, the only reason to move away from respawn is to drop artillery on opponents. In arcade, you already have lead indicator, so another one provided by your radar is not that useful. Yes, radar indicator is more accurate and appears further away. But shooting distant opponents will usually waste your ammunition anyway, unless you are facing helicopters which are not so maneuverable. And when opponents get closer, rate of fire and damage matters more than accuracy. In arcade you will also see less light tanks which are the only ones Shilka can destroy. So in this game mode, Shilka becomes even worse at fighting ground vehicles. Since SPAA that can only attack planes is not that useful throughout the match, it will be more effective to play different tank and spawn a fighter if you need to destroy opponent's bomber. Before I rate the vehicle at the end of a video, I must share the overall feeling of playing Shulka. It wasn't satisfying. I had way more fun playing previous SPA without Raider, even if it's significantly less effective against planes. The only Shilka's purpose is to turn flying things into burning ones. It is very useful when opponents dominate the sky because they no longer can freely attack your allies. Though in practice I often found myself in situation when there are no air targets at all. Then I had a choice, either keep standing on respawn, waiting and maybe become useful if opponents jump into planes before the battle finished or join the allies in fight for capture points, knowing that there is very little I can do to help them and I will be a disadvantage. Basically it's either standing doing nothing or going somewhere to die. Both options are quite demotivating and despite there are situations when Shilka can make huge impact by clearing the sky from opponents, there was way too many times I found myself in this lose-lose situation which negatively affected my overall experience with this vehicle. Though having it in lineup is useful to get revenge on planes after dying with another tank. I would rate the vehicle half of the time in battle useful. When opponents use planes, Shilka is great, it has strong advantage over them and one such as PAA is enough to keep all opponents planes away from battle. But when there are no planes, it's opposite. Every ground vehicle will have advantage over you. So when spawning Shilka, you never know how useful it will be.